Okay, we want to say uh, we're so thankful to be back here at the House of Praise Church, and much, uh, <clears throat> much prayer has already taken place, but we stand with everybody else in America. This is a national day of prayer that our president has uh, birthed it in, and we're so thankful for him for this being a new day in a time that Christi what we call Christianity will uh, humble themselves down and pray to God. And also many that are not in the church, maybe you're listening to the live stream. This is a time we're all praying for uh, some of the things that we see happening out there right now. And I'm just believing that it's going to start getting better. And I believe the revelation of uh, Jesus Christ is going to be planted, established. And I believe the greatest commandment he gave us is love ye one another as I have loved you. We are in that time. Uh, but it's sad that we ha God had to allow things like we're up against here right now the coronavirus and everything in order to uh, get America to pray together and to come together. It should have already been done and accomplished years ago. But I believe that God knows what he is doing. He'll see us through. We have a woman here, by the uh, uh, her name is LaVon. She's worked in the ER for many, many of years. And she's going to come up and share just a little bit about what to do and what not to do. And she may chew us all out. I don't know. But I want to invite LaVon to come up uh, here and talk just a, a few minutes here. Thank you. Well, the house is getting in order. All right. <laughs> no, I, you know, I just want to say something about the spiritual climate that is occurring um, of what I know of, personally know of, from the folks in China. And they are teaching us a lot about the, the underground church is coming above ground in, in some places and they're praying together. Churches that would have never hung together before are using their technology, and every Amen. morning at five o'clock, they are in, on their internet, they're praying one with another. And uh, so the Lord is unifying his body, and we're driven, like, like Pastor was saying, you know, it's a shame we have to get to this part, but we are gonna go through some great stuff. So um, my first recommendation is to understand where this all started in December in China. And so December, March, uh, December, January, February, March. So we're about three months in for China. And that, that is our key because we learned a lot during the first three uh, weeks or so from China. Um, when they started containing people, they closed off uh, Wuhan, they closed off the Providence, it's kind of like a county, they closed off that whole place so nobody in or out. And that helped reduce and slow down, so thank the Chinese government for doing that because it reduced or slowed down this virus long enough for us to make some preparations here. Uh, some of our folks in Europe did not make preparations fast enough, so Europe right now is like exploding Amen. in this virus. But they did, they're not social distancing, they're not canceling large events, so they're having to step back now. The, the governments are doing that right now to try to bring them up to speed so they can slow this thing down. Um, the other thing, the wave that is coming into the U.S., we're, we're really not experiencing the volume that we're going to see because it takes a little bit to get here. Um, Washington State, New York, uh, there are several cases in California. To my knowledge, there's only four cases here in Oklahoma. That's really low down on the list. Louisiana was up to uh, 19 or something like that uh, yesterday or day before. I try to monitor that um, away from media. I'm telling you folks, I'm just gonna tell you the truth. Uh, media can give you good information, but a lot of hype Amen. and a lot of fear. And so I try to stay away from media outlets and go to the very sources of the people that I need to hear from. Who are the people that are working on the virus right now? They're working 24 seven to get this done. So you're looking at about a three month process because the United States is a little bit bigger than China. <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit of time, you know, for it to work through some pockets, but there may be whole counties, whole cities that will not see this at all. Amen. Now, 
you're being deputized today, if I were the sheriff, which I'm not, but our sheriff gave me the authority to deputize you. And what I want you to do with that is to police your own selves. If you're sick, don't come to church. Stay home, we'll pray for you. Let somebody know that you're ailing so we can pray. But clean yourself, clean your environment, clean your cell phone. If you don't know how to clean your cell phone, there's a great YouTube video about it. You can watch it online. I won't take your time now, but honestly, it holds a lot of pathogens. The good news about this is all of this has happened before. It's just happened under a different virus name. Amen. There are hundreds of viruses. This is my third pandemic. And once, um, I was not a nurse, but the, the second time, the second two times, I am. And I will tell you that through H1N1, back in 2009 and 2010, I was working in the emergency department. We did the same things we're doing right now. So the only reason is people are panicking because they're not aware of what we've been through. So I'm going to give you a brief thing and get out of the way. Because the nursing homes, I can't go see my brother. Marie's mom is there. I can't, I can't see anybody there at Stillwell. Good. We want to protect our elders. We want to protect our communities. Um, there are things closing right and left. Do not let that frighten you. It is to protect you. Amen. It is to keep this community safe. The best thing we can do is stay home, get reconnected with one another. Enjoy being together, play games at home, do things at home, stay away. I don't really care to go to Walmart. I mean, I just don't. Um, Bob does the, the ordering online. If you can do it online and pick it up, great, do it. You're not meandering around the store. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can just slow your outside activity, um, except for church, unless you're sick. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is in the United States right now, um, be, this last week was a huge breakthrough week for us. And I've followed Cherokee Nation. Some of this Brandy let me know about, but I've followed uh, January and some of the things that I've seen uh, Cherokee Nation post and what they're doing, really proactive stuff. We are still at the very beginning of this stage, so nobody's falling behind. There's a lot of like rumor and blaming, and you know that that to me, folks, we're to mature up. Amen. Blame has no place in this. We have to look out for one another and bless one another. Life and death is where in the power of the tongue. So we want to do that. We want to bless our president. We want to bless those in Cherokee Nation who are working hard to keep you safe. When you go to the outpatient services center uh, for, at Cherokee Nation, you'll notice there's a stop gap measure. They're gonna stop you there, make sure you can clean your hands, make sure you know that you know where you're going, but they're gonna ask you some questions to help filter out, to help you get to the right place. And if you are having symptoms, don't run to the emergency department. The place you need to be is at home, call your doctor. Or you can call the health department if you don't have a doctor. They will instruct you what to do. They'll ask you questions to filter out. Do you need to be tested? A lot of people want to be tested. They want to know that they're okay. But you have to follow into some categories so we don't waste the kits. Because if you have a fever, a runny nose, a cough, congestion, you might have a sinus infection. Amen. Don't jump to, don't jump to conclusions and think, oh, <laughs> no, you want to slow your th thinking down, get the mind of Christ on it, and do what your doctor or the health department tells you to do. I guarantee you they want you tested if you need to be tested. First thing, a, dry, a fever and a dry cough, I would call them and stay at home. Don't go nowhere. If the doctor tells you, hey, you have the flu, I want you to stay at home for seven to 10 days, whatever they're gonna tell you. Stay home, don't go places, don't be around people. When I had the flu twice in 2018, I stayed in a separate room from Bob. I stay away from my family. I isolate, 
no matter if it's COVID-19 or the regular flu, you do not want to expose them and hurt them. People can die of the flu. They have died this year, flu Amen. season, very severe. So if you have, I heard a guy yesterday talking about if you have respiratory symptoms, coughing, sneezing, all that stuff, consider yourself contagious and protect the people around you. So um, that's really all I have. We've been through this before. We're going to go through it again because it, it cycles about there's new stuff popping up here and there. And it's not all Asia's fault, so forget about that. Don't blame them. <laughs> yes. And, oh, I'm glad you brought that up, Bob. Masks are only for people who are sick or if you're taking care of someone and you have an N95 respirator mask, great. That's great. If they get damp from your breathing, after a while they're no good. I only use a N95 at work one, one shift, and I may take care of three or four people who are coughing. All through January and February, I wore them taking care of respiratory patients. They work. But you do not need a mask. It's not going to protect you. If the person who's sick has a mask, great. Wear your mask. Anything else? Drink plenty of fluids. No, Drink that. a lot of water. Yes. Vitamins. Vitamins. Bring it on. Your, um, your immune system, when you are over the age of 50, 60, kind of cross into those lines, if you have diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, you have um, any um, autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis, that kind of stuff, you are more susceptible because your immune system just is not strong. But there are some things you can do to boost it, and vitamins do that, good nutrition, walking, physical exercise helps keep your immune system burst up. It really strengthens you fast. Also, I like the over-the-counter things you can find at the health food store. So go to your local store. There are a lot of great things. I like elderberry. I took it all through the H1N1. I didn't get it. And we were very busy. So. What's that? Well, if the, your doctor or the health department will tell you whether or not you need to be at home. Um, if you have shortness of breath, that changes the whole thing. Right. So it can go to, there, yeah. They don't have any treatment yet. They're working on it. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to do the, the same thing you would do with, for the flu, fever control, pain control with Tylenol, ibuprofen, whichever one you use pushing the fluids, decongestants like the Dayquil or something like that uh, will keep you going. Well, there could be people that refuse to go to the doctor that they're already having. Yes. A lot of people have mild symptoms. They just stay home. And they're strong reports. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The, the hospitals, you do not want to go. You do not want to go for something that you don't need to be there. That's not a good place to go. But if you have symptoms, anybody that has fever, dry cough, you have congestion, shortness of breath, this thing does go to pneumonia really quick. So you have to monitor yourself. Yeah, and that's the problem with media. I'm sorry, folks. It's just I know people are posting all kinds of stuff on Facebook, y'all, that are not even close to the truth. And um, it, the best thing to do is go to the source, go to the World Health Organization, because they've dealt with all this. I mean, they're wiping Ebola off the map right now. They're winning. But you don't hear the media talking about the amount of people that are recovering. Almost 90% of the people make a full recovery. <laughs> Just before the guy says that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, LeVon, is All that right. it? That's it. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> Just remember if this if water is all you're going to drink today, it's very beneficial for your family, your own self, and for your whole community. Stay healthy, be strong, and love ye one another. Yeah, if you just got to just have a cold Pepsi or iced tea and all of that with a lot of sugar, remember, you can back off and say, I'm going to not drink one because of my loved ones and my grandchildren. <laughs> Now, let's see how much you really love your children and grandchildren today. <laughs> Is it all talk? Okay, uh, Wednesday night, we had a tremendous uh, meeting here. We had some good teaching, and the Word of God begins to, uh, be begun to get a, come alive. And <clears throat> some of us were touched in a great way. And I want to come back and uh, do a little bit more teaching here. And uh, I believe it's uh, what we need to understand <coughs> is going to be uh, how, how well do we know the Word of God, what is taking place within us here right now. And I believe every time the understanding of Jesus Christ begins to be revealed, Inside of us, the farther away we're getting from all everything that we're talking about here. Now, there was a time in my life when I was uh, 24 years old when God delivered me and set me free. People used to talk about, <coughs> talk how we uh, share things about the uh, disease that is out there. Is it a disease or sickness, uh, Levon? A sickness that's out there. <clears throat> we have to understand. I, I used to back then say, ah, oh, the heck with it. You know, uh, we will get by this. We'll, we've been through. I never wanted to team up to help, you know, stop and slow everything down. I would always say, hey, hey, we're in church. Let's talk about God. You know, that was my mentality. That was the way I would react. And, uh, but the key thing is um, I've wised up a little bit. I'm not just... Just because my immune system was kicking in with both barrels, you know, back when I was 24 years old, I didn't have nothing to worry about because everything was going to be all right. But the key thing I'm understanding is I want to not be a person that will just <coughs> say, hey, <coughs> don't worry about that. I want to give a warning and be a part of the team and say, let's get through this. I wasn't wise enough. To, be a, to play and to be a part of that team back then. But today I want to say that uh, I've wised up and I believe we can overcome everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, we did a lot of teaching about uh, the angel that came down from heaven carrying a chain in his right hand and all of that. <coughs> you find that in Revelations 20 verses 1 and 2. Uh, can we go Bible script? Can we use Bible scripture? And uh, I believe that uh, <clears throat> what we need to understand is that there's uh, some difference between the wording of the King James Bible in the Greek text. Now, we have to understand all of that when it comes to how you word something, how you word uh, things that happen, me and uh, uh, Aaron can see a car wreck at McCord Ford Crossing, and I'm going to go, go <clears throat> and run into my friends, and I'm going to tell them what I've seen. And here comes Aaron. He comes along. He, we, he's coming from the same place. Then he begins to tell his story, but he tells it a little bit different. So the uh, <coughs> Greeks, how <coughs> the Bibles have been written up and everything and what's taking place, I believe words sometimes get sugar-coated, okay? They're not as powerful as they were when they were still yet in the Hebrew way of wording things. Just like the Cherokee language, uh, whenever uh, Phyllis was saying, uh, when we were on the trip, said, 
I can tell Clifton in Turkey a joke in, in, in our understanding, in our culture, and laugh, but if I translate it into English and tell Levon and Bob, it may not be funny. It may not be funny but whenever we tell it from the English way of wording it. And it's so real. And <clears throat> we come to a time <clears throat> here about everything that's happening, everything that's going on, how we're understanding. <clears throat> There's a lot of difference in the King James Version. The angel carries the chain on his hand rather, in, in other words, on his hand rather than in his hand. So the key is in the angel's hand and the chain, however, is on the hand that is rolled up around it. The chain is a great chain that is, and it is long and heavy for it is to hold the great and strong dragon. His jailer is duly uh, furnished for his office. See, it's a ministry, a spiritual ministry. So the angel, of course, stands for the revelation. Now understand this. The angel stands for the revelation in manifestation, expression, word. In other words, it's word and ministration of Christ by the Spirit and through a people who have put on Christ. Now, <clears throat> we have to study this in a way we understand what the chain stands for. It stands for a people, a remnant, overcomers, people that are stepping into the feast of the tabernacle in heaven and understanding for what it stands for. And this is a time that we're understanding that we have connection right here in our body, spirit, soul, and body, as it matures up in Christ Jesus, we have connection both in heaven and also in earth. That's why in the days to come, I believe even as Richard prophesied about this place, how it was going to be used in the days to come, I believe in the days to come, some of us are going to be able to come up with the revelation and we're going to shoot down from heaven but we'll be right here on the, in this premises right here in this earth but our mentality the spirit of God will allow us to be in other words we, we will be able to say that I'm coming forth now with the revelation knowledge of who Jesus Christ is and I'm standing for him the Christ the nature that is inside of me has now matured up and it's standing in where God wanted me to be and I'm not the only one but there's others out there come on true and not only in this region but different regions and the uttermost part of this world I believe there's a people that God is developing that means you can operate we can operate in heaven and earth is how God is going to bring this revelation unto us See, these get, see, in other words, <clears throat> there is a time of great expectation, yes. a great chain. See, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. See, there is a ministry, there is a word, there is an, an authority which is strong, powerful, complete. It's unbroken, having no weak links. Understand that. That's what God is developing. That means that when God develops a ministry, there in, in, if we look at it as a chain, uh, there's not going to be any weak links. Everybody that represents this ministry that has the revelation knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, is going to be strong, anointed, powerful. Authority is going to be given unto it. That's why we got to understand here today why it's so critical that we step up. Yes. It really is that we step up and let God do what he wants to do here. <clears throat> See, there's a ministry, there's a word, there's an authority. But I believe that what's happening is no, no weak links, but it's fully able to bind the devil in this great day of the Lord. See, this ministry flows in some measure at this present time. And what's going to happen <coughs> is 
we're going to find <coughs> a flow. We're going to find God moving by this flow, by this authority within a ministry. And I believe yet flow in the mighty fullness through those who grow up into the measure in of the statue of the fullness of Christ. See, a chain, it's going to signify. Can we go to, uh, I think we uh, went to this Bible verse Wednesday night, Isaiah 11 and 9. But let's bring it back again today because I believe this is a message that we need to hear in this day and time. We need to really uh, let God uh, begin to just reveal whatever he wants to reveal unto each and every one of us here. See, a chain signifies anything that prevents free action. Arrow is sometimes called a chain. Love is a chain that holds its captives enslaved. Pride in traditions are also chains that makes us slaves to customs. How the church does things and how we were raised up out of our own cultures. See, the law of our present, the law of our parents is said by scriptures to be as a chain about our neck. In this case, the chain would be none of these things, for it is held by a messenger signifying a strong and powerful word of the Lord. See, it can only be the living word of God's Christ. This is the word that, come, that shall cause the earth to be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. See, that's in Isaiah 11 and 9. And that's what Richard was prophesizing about a while ago, about how the glory of God was going to fill this place in all other nations and all of the world. I believe the glory of God is getting ready to fill, come on, this universe. Are we there in 11th verse? Or is 11? In the day... In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim hmm, Isaiah 11 and 9. My fault, okay? They will neither harm nor destroy on all of my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. See, what we have to understand, what God is going to be doing through us, we're going to manifest it, and the messengers that we see coming out of heaven is going to be the overcomers with Christ in you, in the hope of glory only the Christ that is being built up inside the stronger we get in Christ Jesus the more that every link of this chain is getting stronger and stronger and stronger that's how come messages in how uh, our ministers in this day and time how they download that's how come Sammy we're going to be watching you and Dale and, other, uh, and others here today how anointing how strong Come on, this revelation that you're bringing forth in this day and time, is it binding the strong man? Is our message strong enough, come on, to enter in to somebody's home? Come on, and get a hold of the strong man and tie him up and begin to bind him and say, come on, this is no longer your house, but this is called the house of the Lord now. We have to understand we got to bind the strong man first. That's the time that we, I believe, are stepping into. The devil is strongly and securely bound by the chain of truth. He's being bound right now. The more revelation and understanding comes, where is he bound from? From. He's been bound from within us. 
Wednesday night, I really, uh, there was a handful of us here, but I really, we really allowed the word of God to tear us up. I pointed at Mary and every one of us that was here, Sammy and Dale, my wife. She boy, I told them they're all still demon possessed. And I want to tell you the same way. You're not out of this. You're, we're all still possessed and influence. The word is influence, I would have to say. We're all still influence. But as this chain, what is it? As this chain gets stronger and stronger, what's happening? That spirit of this demon power inside of us begins to be, in other words, it's binding it. It's chaining him up. Yeah. See, we have to understand the spiritual warfare of all of this is going to be within, inside of us. That's what we need to learn and understand. Even though what we call Christianity and devil worshipers and whoever else, they've released in within their own self, they believe that a certain place is so uh, influenced by the devil. And I'll get to that here in just in a little while. But we have to understand, in order for me to really be set free from the Indian uh, way of believing that a booger man is there, knocking on the door or standing by my bed, I had to simply understand that he is now chained up within me so he now he no longer stands by my bed or he's not outside or he's not in the house come on but i'm to a place now as long as i don't believe that nonsense inside of my own self i'm the one that has created that i've created him standing by my bed See, the key thing we have to understand is he is, he is a spirit. And he can only, uh, Wednesday night we said that the only, the only way that anybody can release the enemy power and to give him legs for him to walk around and hands for him to do things and eyes and ears to hear things, he needs a man or a woman to walk and to manifest himself. The enemy power, which I'm, I'm pointing to, the devil, Satan, or the great dragon in our time. See, somebody has to be able to be strong to go after the dragon, the spirit of the dragon. We have to be strong. We can't play with this revelation because there's going to be some thoughts. Our imaginations will get away from us. But the key thing is, if we stand to our ground and if we have the truth abiding, come on, inside of us, we can stand and come against these spiritual, come on, uh, the, the spiritual works of the enemy power that has been manifested within the people in this day and time. That's why we must be strong in order to see all of this <coughs> take place. I'm going to also, uh, Matthew 12, 26 and 29, Daisy, we can go there. See, <clears throat> Jesus bound the devil everywhere he went. When the Pharisees accused Jesus of casting out devils by Zelbub, the prince of devils, he told them, if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children, the Jewish exorcists, cast them out? But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom, the authority of God, is come unto you. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house? See, that's what, 
Jesus was the only one up to now, <clears throat> and we're learning a brand new strategy. We're learning a brand new warfare. See, if you don't fight Satan at a, lo at a, lo at a certain spot or a certain place, how you fight Satan in the enemy power is the same way that Jesus fought him was he did not allow the enemy power to enter in inside of him. That's why everywhere that he went, see what's happening is the enemy power is getting ready to fall from heaven. Now understand this, the enemy power is getting ready to fall from the heavenly realms, from within you. God is birthing in what heaven is all about inside of each and every one of us. Can you imagine if you get a handful of people and their minds are connected in to the truth, the truth where God really is and what Jesus stands for in their lives, and manifest the fullness and be where he's at, where I am there, you can also be too. If we can really allow the truth to, uh, to manifest itself in, in the fullness of what God has got for us, me and you are going to be operating from the same place that God is. But meanwhile, Satan is going to be cast out from me and you, and he's not going to be able to stand where God is bringing me and you into. That's why he's going to be cast out from uh, uh, the heavens. And we have to understand in a time that we're living in what, what, the, what the enemy power said to Jesus. Jesus, they, they, they said, the devils spoke back and said, have you come to torment us before our time? See, in a time that we're coming into, Satan is not invited. Understand that. He can't go where we're going because he can't take. See, what has happened is everything that stands for the devil was sealed inside of Jesus Christ. Who the, who, who the devil was, he had no room to operate in Jesus' mind and body. Everything that I do, I do it unto my father. Every time he tells me to do something, I'm obedient unto him. That's what Jesus said. And the devil, in other words, the devil could not manifest nor have the best of them. That's why he was able to go and cast out, to cast out Satan within a people. Understand that. Now, sometimes this casting out devils goes to our head, okay? I, I can plant I can plant, it's like my son. Where's he at? He, he done left, didn't he? But my son, he, he was telling Lonnie or somebody, he, uh, let me go in a different route with this. Uh, if I was to tell Aaron here, you know, that church has got so much of the devil inside of it, you can feel it when you walk inside the house, the church building. And I planted that inside of him, then he could be at home and his mind would say, that church building over there, it's full of the, it's, it's Satan lives there. See, sometimes we create something that's not even real. What, what has happened is, it's not in that house, it's in this house. That's why we believe like that. And that's the strong man. That's who we got to go after. We got to bind him. And the truth that, we, that is coming our way is a spiritual chain. And that chain is going to bind him 
in, what it's going to do is, where is it going to bind them? Where is it going to wind up? Same thing happened with that word in the bottomless pit, the abyss. That's where he's going to wind up, going to be sealed. So there's a lot in stake inside of us. A lot of uh, warfare that has to be fought inside of us. It's going to have to be dealt with. But I believe, I believe that there is a bottomless pit that the devil is destined for. And that bottomless pit is he's going to be sealed from inside of us, our minds and our hearts, and he's going to flee from our bodies. And can you not just see this? There's no bottom to where he's going to be. There's, in other words, there's a landing place for me and you on this foundation, but that spirit is not going to have no foundation. It's not going to have... No right away inside of you. It's going to be long gone from your mind, from our minds. Sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So we got to understand what kind of a battle that we are in here right now. Now, I believe that Jesus have been able to go back plundering his house, casting out devils, healing those whom Satan had bound and destroying the works of the devil. See, this first son carried in his hand the great chain of the living, an energetic and powerful word of the Lord, for he is within, within himself the word made flesh. Jesus was the word that which was made flesh. No different from me and you here today that the word of God became flesh, but the word of God dwelt among us. The word of God is here among everybody. In other words, the Christ nature as it begins to grow and mature inside of us, that Christ nature, not our own will and not by our doings, but all praises and honor and thanks goes to that Christ nature that lives inside of each and every one of us that now is beginning to mature up in that Christ in you in the hope of glory. Christ is the one that died on the cross of Calvary, defeated Satan. Now me and you are dying out. Come on. And Christ is risen up. Come on, and he's drawing all men unto him. And what's happening is the enemy power is also dying right now inside of us. So we have to understand what's going on here. <coughs> when <coughs> Matthew 8, yeah, Matthew 8 <coughs> and 16. See, many are going to be brought to him that's possessed with the devils and he cast out the spirit with his word in 16th verse when even came many were demon possessed were brought to him and he drove out the spirits with what a word and heal all the sick yes. that's why this flesh it, this, the word of God became flesh and the word of God dwell against us there's, in other words, there ain't going to be that much of laying on the hands and slobbering on everybody like we've always done. I believe the key thing is God is causing the people to rise up and they're going to speak the word and they're going to be healed. You see that? See, only a little baby, you know, if, you, if there's a little baby here crawling around, and we gave this, un- throwed this, you know, right by it and shook it and gave it. That little baby is going to get her attention. And the first thing, it's going to put its hand on it. 
And it's the same way with me and you. We think we got to lay hands on everybody because that's the way we've done things. And I believe in the time that we are in, we're getting back to the word of God, speaking the word of God, and seeing this word of God manifest itself and start healing the people here. Matthew 8 and 8 also, we can go there. See, <clears throat> here's another one saying, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. <clears throat> What's going to happen here is, my sir, he said, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word. Just speak the word, Jesus, and my servant will be healed. Right. See, when the word of God, people, when the messenger shows up, faith, faith increases. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Yeah. Here's a man by the name of Jesus. He had nothing but the word inside of him. That's why this, what is he, a centurion? He, he was there. He didn't even go to church, didn't believe in anything. But his faith got built up. Yeah. Can you not imagine going down on Skid Row? Go down Skid Row and, and, have all, and have that chain, have that truth wrapped around your right hand. Go down Skid Row. I guarantee you they're going to start rising up. And they're going to say, they're going to look at you. They're going to see something inside of you. They're going to be wanting to make a prayer request. That's the time you speak the word of God in that man that's been bound up. Come on, with alcoholism all of his life begins all of a sudden to be set free because his faith is present. Yes. His faith is so genuine and it's so real yes, that it's almost like, hey, here comes this man everybody's talking about, but I feel now what this man is God. I'm not, I feel like I'm not even worthy to get close to him. And here's another one. If I can just reach him and tell him, just speak the word. Hey, just speak the word. Everything be all right. All right. That's faith, isn't it? That's the time that we're headed for. That's why it's going to get better. Yes. Things are getting ready to change. Yes. But we got to bind the strong man first in this house. Amen. And the first step is you're influenced by the devil. That's the first key I want to give us. And if you're listening by live stream, understand this. You're influenced by the devil right now. And we have to get that mess out of the way inside of you. Let God clean it up and let God bind everything that is inside of us. That's the hardest thing for Christianity to, to accept, isn't it? Now... 16 in verse 19, Matthew, <clears throat> he's saying, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So if we're going to bind the enemy power by the Christ nature is going to be bound, bound on earth and it will, it will be bound in heaven. What's happening is now the earthly way, the fleshly way of living, what's going to happen is it's going to die out, be done away with, and we're bound now for the heavenless. We're now reaching inside of us that we can set in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're learning a new, we're getting a brand new platform. We're getting a brand new way of how we're going to worship and how we're going to serve God. We're seeing a brand, see, when you see a revelation and that revelation gets your attention, that revelation, it's the messenger from heaven that allows you to get 
your attention. And the key thing is, it's bringing life in whatever the Spirit of God lays upon you to add to that. Whatever the messenger has released or whatever you studied, whatever you have been reading, come on, many times it's so alive that it it connects and it double witnesses with the spirit that's inside of you. So it causes that teaching inside of you to birth in more revelation, more creative revelation begins to come your way. But if you but if we read something and just stick to that version of what is being written there, then that's when we get ourselves in trouble. But they spoke the word of God and the word of God became alive inside of us and more was added more was created we're living in one of the best times of our lives here see <coughs> he shuts him up sets a seal upon him <coughs> that he should not deceive the nations anymore till the thousand years should be fulfilled and that's in Revelation 23 now now now, where there's a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of darkness, we can use the word ignorance, that's manifested then on this subject of the bottomless pit. This message would be very simple and quickly told if we were to take everything in chapter 20. See, many people have an ideal that the bottomless pit is hell. Somewhere in the center of the earth. So there's a number of Christians will believe almost anything about such teachings in carn carnal minded motions. We have to understand the teachings that we have been going by are only carnality way of man teaching things unto us. But if the spirit begins <coughs> to line up that the bottomless pit is not hell. Come on, we have to understand that. And we have to understand it's a different way of allowing God now to live in this house that he is now going to be building through each and every one of us here now. It's just a different way of looking at things here. <coughs> now, I want to Read this here, that there was, <coughs> there was a man in Kansas, I believe, <coughs> Stockton, Kansas, who had a well. Now watch this. He had a well which went dry at once and began to emit fumes, Coal mine in the neighborhood had tapped in, causing this. So he went deranged about it. He thought the bottom of the well had dropped into hell. Now, this is a true story. He thought his well went down to hell. And the devil was coming out there each morning. By daylight for weeks and in, he would station himself by the well-curved X in his hand and through the entire day would watch for Satan intending to hit him. <laughs> On the head should he show himself. Now, I believe that <coughs> that's not more wise is any child of God who imagines the devil to be some localized entity outside of himself in the bottomless pit or even hell to be a hole in the ground. It is carnal minded, man made religion that tells us such fairy tales that there is a literal pit somewhere in the earth of in the heart of the earth or in some other eternity of God's vast universe where Satan will one day be cast and he will never find the bottomless of it. 
It is a source of wonder that it has never occurred to these people that Satan is a spirit. Why would he need a bottomless pit with all emphasis? See, I believe that the pit in its bottom, in the great chain as well, or in, in, or in any literal or physical sense, totally and interrelevant to a spirit entity. We have to understand that why would all of a sudden Satan be able to come up with a bottomless pit and in, in, there's a fire burning down, way down deep in there. And a lot of people used to, a lot of our average ministers will say they'll get a match or a cigarette, a cigarette lighter and burn their self and they would say, I would not want to be burnt eternity with this kind of a fire. But understand, it's not a literal fire. Fine, let me say that right. I got to make an ugly face, so pardon me. Fire, okay? It's not a literal fire, but it's, it's a spiritual fire that we're dealing with here today. That's what we're dealing with. And why would all of a sudden everything become you know, natural, a, a place, a spot. Why would all of a sudden there be a hell somewhere? Why would all of a sudden, come on, Christianity believe that, you know, now this is where we're going to spend eternity. If you get a fire burning, what's going to happen is, I'm sorry, you're going to get cremated. Everything that you, that you were created with is going to get burned up. Only ashes are going to be left there. So I don't believe, you know, there's a lot of things that we're stepping, you know, into a place where we can get back into the right order. Now, what do we mean by a bottomless pit? The Greek word for bottomless is abos, abos which is derived from a root word meaning dip, depthless. In Greek, it's called the pit of abayas, from which we derive our English word abyss. Did I say that right, Sammy? Abyss. Now, it would be better translated as the pit of the abyss or the pit where that, in other words, it has not no bottom. It has nowhere to land now. You ever wonder what was going to happen to Satan? It's going to be sealed. Now for once and for all, that spirit is going to be sealed within us. And he can't enter into the kingdom. That spirit cannot enter in to God's purpose in humanity that's allowing the kingdom of God to operate inside of them. So in the days to come, we're going to see men and women get stronger and stronger, and everything is getting ready. I believe, that's why I'm saying this is probably the greatest time that we, have, that we are in to serve the Creator. We were not there when Moses was born. We wonder in the time of Noah, but we're here. In this day and time. Bottomless is a good translation of this word. For the thought of the Greek is that, that it is that whose depths are in immeasurable. In other words, it can't be measured. They're just, they're, in other words, it's a bottomless. It's a good translation of this word. For the thought of the Greek is that that it is that whose depths. So as soon as one attempts to suppose a physical or a literal reality corresponding to this picture image, he falls into the endless difficulty. Now, here We have a spiritual picture of a character in a nature. 
It is true that righteousness and truth are related not only with the light, but also with height and evil and error are associated, not only with darkness, but also with the depth. So this morning, I need to close out as quickly as I can. <coughs> I believe it's a spirit, and it becomes then, I believe which is a spiritual meaning signifies a thought or a nature so deep as to be beyond the comprehension of the natural mind. No, it's so comprehension. It's so we can't really, if people say, where is that man going to, whenever he spends eternity in hell, they'll say, I can't tell you about it. I've never been there, and I don't want to go there. They make it to be like it's a place that nobody wants to go, but they can't give you the full details of what God is really saying about the bottomless pit in the chain, the abyss and everything. So we have to come back to a time in our lives the answer was within us at all times. It's like that fallen nature. That fall, have we fallen so far that we have forgot where our home is? Heaven is our home. The temple of God is home in heaven. <coughs> Again, Revelation is a spiritual book. It's like the next time we need to remember in order to understand this great mystery is that like everything else in the book that seems that John beheld in chapter 20 are all symbols standing for spiritual realities, both positives and negatives. That the bottomless pit or the abyss in the symbolics of scripture portrays the human heart. Is beautifully expressed by the prophet David, Psalm 64, 2 and 6. See, they search out iniquities. They accomplish and delegate and search, plumbing the deeps. Both the inward thought of every one of them in the heart is deep. The heart is the house of praise church. <laughs> Can you go there, Daisy? 64, Psalms, verse 2 and 6. Daisy's in training right now. See, the heart of the natural man is his deepest and innermost sense of being. I, can I keep you 15 minutes more than I usually do? Quit at 15 after 12? Because yeah. I know many of you, we've had biscuits. If anybody gets hungry, there's a biscuit in there, okay? <laughs> yeah, if, you think, if you're getting kind of weak and blurry, there's a biscuit in there. <laughs> Two and six, hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked from the plots of the evildoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim cruel words like deadly arrows. See, what we have to understand is the heart is probably a place where, again, the heart of the natural man is his deepest and innermost sense of being. The heart is not the root of all human expression in identity. The heart is indeed the wellspring of what is called human nature. Out of thy heart thou confess it, or out of the abundance of thy heart thou confess it. Whatever is in this heart is what we are. 
That's our nature. That's just who we are. See, of that nature, Jesus said, for from within, out of the heart of man, proceeds, uh, they see uh, Mark 7 and verse 18. I'm going to have to teach they see how to uh, follow me. And when I say a scripture, automatically she can go there. I think she can do it, isn't it? That's when you become a real good what, what, what she, whatever she is up there. <laughs> but anyway, Mark 7 and 18. Are you so dull, he said, don't you see that nothing that enters into a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach, and then out of their body, in saying, Jesus declared all foods and clan. Now, I believe what we need the heart in is indeed the well spring of what is called human nature. Of that nature, Jesus said, for from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulterers, fornications, murderers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blaspheming, pride, and foolishness. All of these things come and arise from deep within, and it defiles the man. See, we must conclude then that the heart of man is the very lowest rim. Now watch this. The heart of man is the lowest rim of man's being. In a man's heart. Remember Crossland doing all this teaching? It's, if you ever want to know where hell is, you go down to, to as low as you can go in your life. You lived a life that was so difficult and hard, it's a state of being. So this is a time that I believe that we're finding a brand new place. <coughs> now the heart, I know many traditional natives and tribes will always speak about seven directions, north, south, east, west, below, above, in the center. <coughs> and they always say, and the center represents a human body, a human heart that's the center of the earth. They always said that you as a nature, as far as your nature can take you from your heart and your mind, you can go and be at home and your heart can be, come on, in a different state. You can be, you know, in a different country trying to figure out what's going on. Now, the key thing is going to be have we really come to a time in our walk with God that we have walked so low that sometimes the teachings that we have keeps bringing us down lower and lower. Our lives are not getting any better. And sometimes what happened, David said, out of the pits of hell, you didn't leave me there, but instead you allowed me to come out of the pits of hell. And David didn't go down to what we call the bottomless pit, in which is hell. He lived in a state of being that it was almost like, man, I'm living in hell now. This is the time that my heart has never been here before. My mind has never entered here before. And somehow, God, you're going to have to get me out of this. Today, I want to just say unto each and every one of us that I believe this is a time that we have come into that the heart, who can know the heart? Who can know this wicked heart? Who can know what really this heart is capable of doing right now? It's your nature. You ever had somebody to look at you and say, the way he's looking at me, I don't know whether to trust him or not. But really, that man was simple-hearted. You could get along with him better than anybody else. I believe this is a time that we're stepping into that many of us are going to begin to find what 
God really wants to do inside of each and every one of us here. So with my closing, I want to pray. In closing, I want to just say that God is able to allow our lungs. You that are listening on live stream, I believe that God can touch each and every one of us to where we can breathe the way that God created our lungs to be, to keep us alive and to keep the oxygen flowing inside of us. And I believe also when this virus that everybody's talking about, sometimes, uh, Senator, you probably know this uh, here, is that uh, they're, they're, they're saying that it starts by entering in and it starts around in the throat area. And once it's there, then it begins to make its way on down. I believe uh, somebody said if the old remnants used to work a long time ago, it would probably help you even right now. As they said, gargle, warm water, salt, try to knock it out while it's still right there in the throat area. But I believe, you know, here today that we, we're going to have enough wisdom and knowledge to understand the spiritual sicknesses that's trying to come upon us. And, and I believe we're going to overcome everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's trying to enter in, but it's when it goes into the lungs and when it begins to try to defile me and you then our nature our heart you know that's who we become but the key thing here today is we're going to pray that we're going to stay healthy we're going to pray that the blood of jesus christ is more powerful than anything else cover us god by the blood of Jesus Christ here today. In those that are on live stream, God cover them, move in their lives, whether they're in church or not, that does not matter. What matters is that our live stream audience will also, come on, be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Those that are not inside the church, where they're on skid row drug homes, God touch them and heal them in a very, very special way here today. Let everything right now that's trying to build up, Father, let it begin to be destroyed. Let it, Heavenly Father, let it not zero in, but we catch it right now. On every man, in every woman, every child, all of our elders. Father, we're believing that in the early stages that many of our people are in over this region, even in America as everybody's praying along with the president today, Father, we say right now, this sickness will be reversed in humanity. Father, we want to seal it. And as we bring the word of God, Father, we destroy the anointing, destroy the works of the enemy power. Right now, Father, let our minds be touched and healed. Let it be stronger than it's ever been before. Father, let everything from the top of our heads down to the soles of our feet, I'm praying right now, Heavenly Father, just as the enemy power is going to be sealed and chained up, this virus Heavenly Father is trying to come into our territory. But Father, I'm going to believe that we that have the word of God, we set up our watchmen, our watch hours, our gates, our walls. Father, and over this territory... We bind this enemy power. We speak to it and we say, you 
have no jurisdiction over this region. We reverse and we say we dismantle you in our households, within our bodies. Father, we magnify you and we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm believing right now, Heavenly Father, that there will be a strong people that will begin to rise up in the mist. Let them, let them come from the north, south, east and west, from above, below, and from the center, Heavenly Father, all seven directions, we call upon our sons and our daughters, come home. Come home and understand what home is really all about. Heaven has now come. Heaven will now be available and it will be wide open to the understanding of humanity. It will never be sealed or blocked. Father, I just believe right now you're going to touch and minister our people in a great way. Yes. Praise you, God. Amen. Okay, thank you, Delbert. Appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to call.